And we're back. <laughs> For real. Episode 29, man. And you guys have been waiting on this one. We haven't we haven't done this. We in, we intended to do this in episode one, but we kind of we're learning. We're all over the place. So episode 29, it's only right. It's gonna be Black Leaf as the episode. <laughs> Your host Pat God's here, co-host Black Leaf in the building. But tonight you will be the guest as Black Leaf. And we're going to get into the Black Leaf story tonight and let the world know. I think that uh, some people were definitely asking and wanting to know more about the story, wanting to know more about the host, obviously, you know what I mean? And uh, we'll get into that today. So today's your time to shine, my man. And I'm happy to introduce you and happy to have you as a guest here <laughs> and uh, and also as a co-host here. I'm excited, man. Yeah, it's been a long journey. Uh, 18 years of cultivation uh, going on 19 this year. So that'll make for some crazy times. Absolutely. Yeah. So it's only right we start at the at the beginning. You know, a young black leaf. Mm. Let's start before you even started smoking. Okay. Because I know you were a good kid. Yeah. In high school, but you like you listen to like No Effects and shit. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you went to like Newfound Glory concerts and shit. You had your hair spiked. A hundred percent. Talk about bro. that a little bit. What was it like growing up? Where are you from? I'm um, from that. Sarasota, Florida uh grew up that's like a beach town right if you don't know sarasota florida it's like white beaches just like a little beach town in florida tampa area yeah yeah and uh mom and pop that's probably the best way to put it right back back when i grew up best beaches um, in the world it is the best yeah (laughs) someone's heard that before someone's heard that before yeah his dad shout out to coach i see you watching a home if you're from sarasota you rep sarasota yeah you know but uh that's the key no uh grew up playing baseball like every kid right football but then things took a turn i really i got into skateboarding and bmx riding i yeah. uh i really took to bmx um but then in college you know talk I about mean, that a little bit man well i was on the baseball field and i'm looking to my left while i'm out in there on the baseball field and i'm seeing these kids ride bikes and jumping over mounds right and i'm out there like waiting for the next batter and you're like, am, am I doing the right thing? Like th- that seems a lot more interesting than what I'm doing. You know how slow baseball games can get? Yeah. And you're seeing these riders get ready, da-na-na-na, and then a race goes, right? And you're watching 15 races while you're waiting for the next batter, the next this. And I'm hearing it because the track was right next to the baseball field. Right. So I was like, and then after practice, when there was time when we were waiting for parents to pick us up or get a ride. I would walk over there and just watch. And it was like all the cool kids were doing that. Just to be honest. Much more enticing. I was like As a kid to do that. Extreme sports. And the guy, they were like guys with cars driving up, pulling their like thousand dollar bike out. And you were like, who, what is this? You know, like, you know, as your kid, you're like, this looks dangerous and like intriguing. Yeah. And so I got into that. Um, Number one in the state, my second year. Uh, went to Ohio to race BMX to represent Florida, you know, and, and did Fire. a, yeah, yeah. Did a couple of things. I really coach enjoyed come? it. Yeah, man. We stayed in a hotel and the race was actually in the bottom of a hotel. So you literally, what? yeah, the whole like arena in the bottom of the hotel in Ohio, it's snowing outside. It's negative degrees. You're inside the bottom of a hotel and they built a whole dirt track in the bottom of the, and you race there. Fucking great. Wow. Yeah. I but, had no idea BMX was even. It was, I mean, I'm a nine, you know, I'm an eighties baby. So you're talking late mid nineties. So that was big in nineties. Yeah. BMX. Yeah. Who, who, who was the big guy? Uh, Dave, Dave, uh, I'm Mira? out here. Dave Mira. The big guys we were into though was like fuzzy hall. Got it. Was like, uh, there, you know, some of the, uh, I'm a little younger. I come from yeah. a little. Ryan, Dave Muro was like the Ryan man. Nyquist. I mean, like some yeah, of the yeah, yeah. Nyquist some, was the man. So there, some of those guys were school. local tracks, like Tampa and shit. So we were yeah. big into like, yo, he's from where we're from. You yeah, know, that was dope. big in BMX. That's dope. Yeah. So after that, BMX led you into what the later years of high school. You kind of got into football some different stuff. What were you doing for like work and stuff like that? Uh, detailing cars. <laughs> and then when high school came about. I got the talking to like, you're going to continue to do this kid, like this kid stuff, or are you going to play football and do like, this is where girls, are. you know, I got the talking to. Right. And I realized like, yeah, no one in my high school was going BMX. Like it was rare, right? right it right. Came, became like a fun thing for myself to like, this is the next step. Seemed Started playing like football for, for high school and shit, you know? Yeah. yeah. What position were you? Linebacker. 
Let's go, Biggs. I'm coming for them heads. Is that where you got the name Biggs? Nah, no, you gave yeah. me that. <laughs> Nobody but before you, bro. <laughs> Everyone else just calls me L. I'm good at giving people nicknames. Yeah, they I thought stink. I was going to get a street name, though. I, got, <laughs> I didn't that get is that. That is a street name, man. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. Put Biggs in a box. Go ahead. <laughs> um, No, that's dope. So, linebacker, football. Mm-hmm. You're detailing cars. Yeah, I know, detailing I know you mentioned to me a few times I got about the, balleting at the Ritz. Talk about that a little bit. What was that like? So I was detailing cars and uh, I started my own detail company and I was in high school, right? So I would put flyers on people's, I would go to the rich, rich, ritziest part, Longboat Key, and put flyers on people's nice cars saying, I detail cars. Here's my info, right? This is way back. Yep. And uh, my stepdad at the time, who had passed away, RIP, um, Don had told me, you should go the Ritz Carlton. We were just down there for dinner and they don't have anyone who's detailing their cars. So you need to go there and say, I, I need, you should get that contract. You should be the detail company who details any car that comes into the Ritz. He's like, I was just down there for dinner. I wanted my car detailed. They, they didn't have it. Right. So I went down there and pitched them. The Ritz Carlton. I went down there and said, uh, you know, it took a couple couple times getting an interview, and absolutely, and they liked me so much, and they said, listen, if what happens if the service isn't going? And I was like, well, you know, and they were like, would you want a valet? And then if a car comes, you can detail it, and you get the check. Like I had worked out a good deal, right? Ninety bucks for me, ninety bucks for them for a full detail. I was wow. getting checks, bro. Yeah. I'm gonna be honest. Like I was making, yeah. and there was no pooling tips. It was like whatever you made, however you hustled. That's what you made. Right. So I was leaving between $150 to $250 every single night I worked in high school. I was leaving fucking the Ritz Carlton. What were you doing with that money that you were making? Saving all of it. Yeah. For the move? Uh, for college. And like, just ha I, I kept hearing, like, you're going to want, you're going to need money. You don't know, like, what are you going to do? I don't have a job, right? When I get to college. So, like, there's a figuring out period. Like, what right. are you going to, and yeah. so, like, you're going to need something. Yeah. And so that's what that that's was. That's what that was. Yeah. Got yeah. you through. Yeah. So you graduated. Working what? there was crazy, though. You meet a lot of uh, rich girls. You meet a lot of crazy. Like, I mean, work, think about working at the Ritz Carlton. Who comes in and out? Any crazy stories you want to yeah, share? Yeah, bro. Man? So, one time, yeah, I'll give you. So, one time, some guys come in and they're like, because in Sarasota, they have a curfew of, of, of uh, alcohol. At two o'clock, they you can't buy it at 7 Eleven, nothing. So yeah, some dudes roll in and it's like 2 30, and they're like, if you can, they roll into the valet and they say, Can you get us some alcohol? And we give them the like, hey, it's past 2 30. Can't, you know, and he's like, if you can get me alcohol, it gives me a hundred bucks. He's like, You keep the change. We just want a 12 pack. So a hundred bucks for a 12 pack. So I'm, you know, the hustler. This is before right? inflation. No, but you want to, <laughs> this is when you know if you're really a hustler. Like it, you start to look back on your life and you're like, I I basically started calling friends and I was like, okay. And then I called my mom who, and I was like, yo, I'm going to, I'm doing the overnight shift. This was the overnight shift. I used to work sometimes the valet overnight shift because you could get, you could get personal rides. You could, you could make serious bread because guys come in late. Come out, yeah, yeah, yeah. Money. <laughs> All that. And so, yeah, man, just, just really uh, procured a 12 pack for these guys, got it back up to their room, gave them a worn 12 pack, went home. I basically grabbed it out of my fridge, bro. You know, like I was, I gave my mom 20 here, 20 bucks. Here's double the price. of what it, you know, shit like that. But it was all that. What kind of 12 pack was it? Coors Light. That's what my dad drinks. Shout out to Coach, <laughs> man. Shout out to Coach. Coors Light. He's, gonna, he's gonna love this episode for yeah. sure. Yeah, but yeah. So, so where'd you graduate? Where'd you? Where were you? Sarasota going to High School. Sarasota High. Yeah. What yeah. year? Uh, two thousand two. Oh two. Mm -hmm. Sarasota High. Some and, of you'll be laughing. And then <laughs> that's old. And, and 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 then what? Uh, what conspired? Went to UCF, University of Central Florida, and. Uh, what was that like, like making your decision? Did you have like multiple options that Man, you were like trying to figure out or like, would you, how'd you like figure, you know what I mean? Yeah. You were like, wherever I can get into or what? Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> I mean, you could kind of get the drift of where my focus was during high school. You know, it was more on work and I honestly didn't enjoy high school a lot. You know, I'm gonna be honest. Like a I, lot, of, yeah, I feel like a lot of a lot of kids have rough uh, high mm -hmm. school experiences. Yeah, mine was more focused outside. As soon as I got out, I was either hanging with the kids I wanted to hang with, like you know my my group that were smoking weed. I never smoked weed in high school, but that were and just guys that were doing the same things I was hustling. 
but in not like how we look at it today. Right, right. Like hustling and jobs, detailing cars, making anything work. Did, to, did you apply to more than one college? Yeah, I applied to three: FSU, UF, and UCF. Did and I'm get, a I'm a trip I'm a trip out. I thought I would get into three. I got into UCF. That's it. And I had no, but <laughs> it's crazy. I actually had a decent. I think I had like a three point two or a three point four. So I had like a have like a three three eight. Yeah, four and oh. my focus was on hus like work and other things, but it worked out for the better, bro. UCF was a hell of a school. I'm so glad I, I went there to be honest. So what was it like packing packing your bags? You're headed to UCF. Did your mom and dad bring you? Did your coach drop you off? No, you're just you're out. You're in the at the. Now this is me just knowing you, but you're in the infinity at this time, or you didn't have the infinity. Yet. I had a '66 Mustang that I had rebuilt with my first stepdad. We had spent months and months and months. Re I had rebuilt it, thinking we were gonna like take it to a show, and it was for him. And then on my 16th birthday, he and when I got my the day I got a license, literally the six, he was like, "Yo, that's that's your car," and I was like, "What?" So when I went to college, I had had a lot of issues in high school with people being jealous and keying it and shit. So my, my parents were just, yeah. And like, you know, fights, bro. My crew used to, we used to get into fights, you know, shit like that. And people would be upset. So then they couldn't come back at you. So they, you know, they knew that was your whip. It was right, a 66 right, right, Mustang right. in the middle of a high school parking lot, you know? Right. But yeah, man, just, uh, I knew I needed a new whip. So I, no, I had, a I had like another Mustang, but like a boss 302 yellow. I had bought, I had trade, I had taken the money, sold it and bought a new whip, another Mustang, an upgraded one. Yeah. yeah. Rolling into UCF, brand new whip. You moved into I'm, the dorms. Yeah. By myself, though. Here's your stuff. Good luck. Let us know how it goes. I like that. You know, I like that's that. how you boss you. up. I mean, I'm going to be honest. It's good for you. Yeah. It not, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be honest. Not many parents do that for their kids. I like how you said do that for them. They don't. Yeah. They do for them. At the time, though, you don't look at it like that. You're no, like, you don't. For real? Yeah. But the guy's like hard. You're being but, hard at me. Yeah. But it's like, no, you got to go. Be an adult now. Like yeah. You got to go live. And it ends right here, though. Not taking you up there and baby. I feel in. like in a good parent child relationship. But, anyways, I mean, yeah. it's good <laughs> that you got aware parents that were, they knew, or oh, teachers. you need to go, you know, yeah. off and do your thing now. So you're rolling up. What's what's going through your head as you're moving in your shit? Like, who, what were your roommates like? Like, I had, a, was, I had a cool what, what dude, was bro. I had an engineer, super heady dude. Um, he used to like play video games. I wasn't too big into video games, but I'm going to be honest. This is exactly how it went down. First day, first two days, went to the gym and went to work out. And this other dude working out, and this might sound, was like, hey, what up, bro? And I was like, what's up? He's like, you, you just started going here? Uh, Joe Pacini. I'm going to say it out, bro. Shout one, out, Joe. My fraternity brother, one of my closest homies at that time. And uh, he was like, you, you go here? And I was like, yeah. And he's like, you know, you live right here. I was like, yeah, yeah. And he's like, yo, what are you doing tonight? I was like, nothing. He's like, I'm going to this club called Roxy. He's like, uh, you should come. There's uh, some, some guys that were going, well, you should meet everyone. I was like, all right. It's like my third or fourth day there. No one's in the dorms. I went the first day you could move in. So there's, like, it's like dead empty, bro. But getting out there, bro, I met Joe. And then that led me to Jared and my fraternity brothers, that's who they were. They so, had, so what I, What was their intention of inviting you out? They wanted to uh, court me to come in the fraternity. I didn't know at the time. <laughs> you I, got recruited, I, son. But Joe was actually a recruit too. So he had recruited me. He was going and was like, you that's should a, come with that's me. That's how that shit works. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you were guilty by association. Yeah. So what was it like? What frat are we talking about? And what was that? You know, I was a pike at UCF, Pi Kappa Alpha. So... Day two, you're going to rush at a frat, unexpected. Yeah, I was UCF, not going to like UCF on, on your own. My parents were like a frat. No, like they weren't. That wasn't something in the books either, especially not Pike. If anyone knows Pike, to be honest, yeah. What was that like getting into that? I'm like when they say Hell Week, it was Hell Week, bro. And it was. Can you give us a couple? I mean, like <clears throat> I, but th that's also okay. So I don't know if you want to talk about the first time smoking weed. But that's, let's talk about it. So yeah, so, so you, that's you, then you 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 got courted on your second day. Yeah, and then like a week later, and a week later you're headed to a concert. Or they're something. like, hey man, uh, we got some girls, we got some guys, we're gonna go to this concert. We got an extra ticket. You want to go? And I was like, hell yeah! And these are all dope. They're all dope dudes, bro. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And and like you know at the time like older girls, you know you're like hell yeah. yeah. 
So I get in the back of this Explorer and I'm in the middle. This is just like high school, bro. It's the same thing. This is what's right. funny. They sit on the either side. So it's a girl on either side and I'm in the middle, right? And then two guys in the front. And we're riding to the concert and they light up a blunt and they start to hit it. Right. And I, I just, I still had never like not smoked. I was just, I always just pass it, you know, nothing, nothing weird, but I would just grab it and then pass it to the next person. And I went to do that to from girl to girl though. Right. And my homie literally stops, you know him, yeah. he stops and like out of the corner of his eye, sees it and reaches back. And he's like, hit that shit. <laughs> <laughs> And you know him, you know, Big yeah. J yeah. and uh, Jared, you know, shout out. J and he was, uh, he was like, yo, hit that shit. And that was, I really didn't need more than that to be like, oh, this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You know? And so what was that? We had a funny convo. I said, bro, I, I don't smoke, you know, da, da, da. And I was like, I'm afraid if I, I'm going to really like it. I swear to God, I said that. I, th I mean, I, and he tells me to this day, he'll bring it up to me. He'd be like, bro, I remember having that convo with you and you were, because like my life took a turn at that point towards what I am you now. You saw yourself, your identity change. Uh, man, you know, as a creative, it like opened something I hadn't opened yet. You know, the creative side of my brain. To be honest, I was very business minded, focused day to day, in and out, one by one, on and on. Right. That's like, and then it became, uh, I see colors kind of like that, right? Like that. Wow. Music. Wow. Like, you know, the same phase, I feel like a lot of stoners go through Bob Marley, Led Zeppelin, right? Right. The Rolling Stones. And I start to, then I start to hang out with girls and then I start to go to con, you know, and it just becomes a lifestyle. It, exactly. And then soon after I meet, not even maybe two months after I meet some guys that have weed that I've never seen before. This weed doesn't look like anyone else's weed. Like not even close. Yeah. And they're, they're like fraternity brothers, right? Like, and, uh, I was in just, your fraternity uh -huh. or another fraternity? No, in mine. One was a pledge at the time. I had actually made it in, right? Like, so I went through my pledging that first. So sorry. Like I went through my pledging phase. I apologize. And then well, the next well, semester. What was one of the, what was some of the stuff they made you do a hell week? I mean, a lot of it was team building, bro. So uh, like looking back as an older brother, that's what we're going to start doing here, but it was, it was. So, you know, just to, let me try to, uh, so like one of the big things is like everyone has a brick with their name on it. You know, I'm divulging some shit. I maybe I should, but maybe I shouldn't be, no, but seriously. everyone has a brick. Maybe there's, you start off, we start off with 36 pledges and we finished with eight or 12. That's how many made it just to be honest. Okay. So think about that, right? These are men too. These are guys that want it. And so everyone has a brick with their name on it. This is team building. <laughs> we didn't know at the time that this was about that. They were fucking with us, but you know, you learn older that you're doing it for the younger guys. Like, Oh, we do this on purpose. Right. They leave your brick out. So there's, it's mind games. It's seven days of no sleep, a very little hours at the most. Right. And very little food. All the food is like regulated and watched over. And it's very, it's stuff you don't usually want to eat. And it's, it's hell week. It's, you know, how you would think. And you live in a bathroom Were with you like kitty litter. No, nothing like that. It's just like, sh like, bro, it's like Chinese. It's like eggs that are like birds that they boil, but it's actually a bird inside the egg. And it's like, I mean, whoa, whoa. shit that you're whoa, like, this whoa, is whoa, fucking whoa. crazy. Allegedly. Yeah. Allegedly. <laughs> yeah. But no, just shit. stuff like that. What but, the? but see what I'm saying? But this is like the part of break, to break you. Yeah. But then the team building is the exercises, the stuff you would do where you end up having to work together to accomplish this goal. And that's the only way this works. If you don't, you don't pass this point. You guys stay back. You got to figure it out. See what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's it's breaking you while build, at the end, next thing you know, you're brothers, right? It literally, you feel that's how you come out of it as. And it's if they do it right, it works, you know, but it can be a lot for a lot of people. You start with 32, you end up with eight or 12, you know? Yeah, straight up. But I'm meant for that shit. You know me. So you made it. Yeah, yeah, I made and it. And then you find out some of your brothers or he didn't make it. No, he was living in the house. I'm living at the house. I moved into the house. I moved out of the dorms, talk to my parents like, yo, I need now to be with these the guys. Yeah. So I lived in, the, I moved into the Pike house and I'm, sm I'm working at Roxy because they ran that shit at the time, to be honest, like as far as like management. And so they got me a job. I got a job. So I was being able to pay bills and stuff and I'm going to school and uh, I'm smoking at night only though. 
And I'm going to school during the day, working at, at night. And then at the end of the night at 2, 3 a.m. when we get up or 4 a.m., I would smoke a blunt with some guys, right? We'd throw, I only had like, we'd throw in $12, you'd pay 13. Next yeah. week, I'd pay 13, you'd pay 12. <laughs> I swear to God, right? For a 25, yeah. for a half yeah. day, for a blunt. And uh, yeah, man, that's literally how it went. And then I kept seeing like, yo, these dudes weed though. When I would get it from, like when these dudes were, yeah. having, it doesn't look like anything like this other stuff. And I would start to basically just got close to them, bro. What type of strains? Pot of gold. Okay. Original blueberry. Ooh. Um, Sticky. I think we used to see some, it was pot of gold, blueberry, and super skunk. Super skunk was, skunk was like what the surfers used to call surfer crippy, in my opinion. Yeah. I'm looking back now, lime green, stink up the whole car. Surfers crack. Yeah, exactly. Shit. Everyone had like a, a reference for yeah. it, but yeah, it was skunk. It was a super skunk. And that's what these dudes were growing at the time. And the super skunk was insane, bro. Say all of them were. These guys were going fire, bro. Two guys. So what'd you one do? of my fraternity brothers and one that wasn't. So what'd you do to to kind of get in their circle? Made myself of use. I literally got around them, friendship, right? Gain their trust. And then gain their trust and help them out at every turn. You guys need like what can I, you know, and they were actually one of them was a younger brother. That the guy that I'm talking about, he actually moved in the house. He was older than me by like eight, nine years, but he was younger in the grand scheme of things. So I was actually could tell him what to, but it wasn't like that, right? If you're respectful. So we just I just got I made him if you're aware. Yeah, there you go. I just made myself close and of use, bro. And he's a friendly guy. So it never really got, hey, this is what I'm doing and this is what this is. It was just I got close and I inferred what was happening that you wanted to help um that this is interesting that's it yeah this is very interesting this is so what, what is was this? the first time like you being able to i found out. some weed with seeds in it and so these guys wouldn't let me in they wouldn't tell me anything really and so what i did was i went to home depot and bought some soil and i pretended like i was building myself a tv stand in the fraternity house and i built myself a grow box and I planted these seeds from some bags of weed I got from somebody and uh, that mishap or whatever. And I was, I just turned the light on, bro. And was literally like, you're vegging out. Yeah. I'm thinking <laughs> like, I'm growing some weed. I'm growing some weed though. Oh, yeah. But I had hooked up computer fans to the box and was, I had read this whole thing. I was yeah. any extra time. I was like, I got to, you know, do this too. You know, I want my own, yeah. you know, and nothing ever came of it, but they saw my interest. Right. Right. They were the only ones who Did knew. Did they take the a look at that? They, they knew. Them? They would come into my, my room was like the hangout spot. So they would come yeah. in and we would smoke and stuff. My room was like the place where like the president of the fraternity, everyone liked me. So like they would smoke in my room because like it, I wouldn't get in trouble. If we fogged out the other rooms, it sometimes could be a problem. Right. So I'm saying so. Yeah. Yeah, man. It was just like. They knew they, they got it. But to be honest. So how did you get from that mm -hmm. to them telling you what's up and really. Six months went by probably. And uh, these were two Spanish guys. OK. And I used to hang out with them. We would smoke. There was no like I, I was as welcome as anybody at that time. But then when this one guy would come around, who was actually in our one of our rival fraternities. He would come to our house, which is rare too. You know, a lot of people didn't want to just come to the Pike house unannounced, right? He would come by and they would make me leave the room. And I would always be like, I got to leave. Yeah. And I knew like, okay, who's this guy? So I would go stand by the front door of the Pike house and sit down. We had couches. And when he would <laughs> come by, I'd be like, what's up, bro? You know, I mean, you're, you're coming to our, he'd be like, what's up? You know who he is too at the time. Um, super clean cut, like surfer kid. You know, yep. and he would go in there and then next thing you know, they'd have some fucking crazy <laughs> flavor called Florida Juicy Fruit. Ooh. And everyone was tripping on this flavor. Yo, Juicy Fruit. Like, and it was literally Juicy Fruit gum, right? Yeah. You know, I remember smoking some of it. I didn't even know you got, like, I'm younger than you guys. So but I'm, you were in proximity. But I'm in young high school, middle school yeah. at this point. That's crazy to think about, though. You know, what I, mean? I was where it came, came really. from. It came from, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. The juice. Yeah. You know, That's and uh, so, okay, he's somebody in this mix, right? And he resembles me. I'm just a white kid, right? And like, he resembles me, right? So I'm like, hey, dude, what's up? 
Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And we would have parties that like were crazy where we'd be smoking weed in the fraternity house, right? Where nobody else would really do that. That wasn't like a bit. And so other, for like he would come over and other fraternity members who were all so cool um, would come over and we just got close, bro. I just did the same exact thing. I made myself of use. I would go to his house, help him trim weed or help him literally just hang out like pay by by a half eighth and then be like all right bro thank you know like anything i could just get around him and i remember for months i would help him i knew he grew he tried trim his weed for free and he would always say all the weed you could smoke all the food you could eat so like if you're hungry order something and if you want to smoke bro roll something up but just keep trimming i wish we could, i wish that deal still stood yeah but when you're hungry, no, that, I would literally go to ago. class. I would stop, have to dust my head. I'd be like, yeah. I'll be back in like wow. two hours, bro. He's like, we'll be here. Wow. And that's that was months and months and months, you know. And then to tell you how I first got in, then those original two guys saw my hunger. I'm getting close to him. The original, uh, we call him hippie. We'll just leave it at that, yeah. right? The original hippie was getting out of his grow. And now this is still 2002 towards the end of the year now, right? Beginning of 2003. Shit moved pretty quick. I was hungry and I had no nothing. You know, I was working at a club making ends meet type shit. Like it wasn't, and it wasn't what I wanted to do. I was going to school, having a great time at college, right? But I was really interested, just like I was in high school, interested in extracurricular, bro. I wanted something different. And uh, they hit me one day and said, hey, man we're going to, if you're down, we're going to blindfold you and take you somewhere. And, uh, we got to, we got want to talk to you about something. And I was like, let's do it. <laughs> you know, most people will be like, what? Yeah. I'm gonna be honest, but, uh, yeah, let's do you it. Were waiting on that. Yeah. And, uh, they took me to a spot, oh, took off the blindfold, pulled in the garage, right. Took off the blindfold. We walk in and I could smell it. Right. Just, whoa, what? And the, every room in the house is lit up, right. With yeah. blueberry, um skunk juicy fruit what a pot of gold um all that shit what was it like tables and hydroponics it was so at first bro they had bought like corrugated like it's like this stuff at home depot that's like this. i know you're talking and they about. had yeah they had put it about. together as a table and then run it to where the two by fours on the back legs were higher than the front so the they'd trains. done a drip system and everything dripped into this like almost like gutter and then yeah. came down and then they put a gutter on the end that ran down to a reservoir. So everything would be, but picture like a 12 by 12 room. And then the, they would just build it out to 10 by 10. So the whole platform and then just hang lights over the platform. Yeah. Holy things. Shit. A year later, things went to tables and stuff. This was making it. And work. they had every room. going. Yeah. Every room was going at the time. So what, what was it like? We, we were running 600s there. though. Whoa. You know, what was what was going through your head? What were they saying? You know, they said the guy who who gave us this house, who we were partnered with. The, there's three partners the in hippie. this. The hippie is moving up north yep. to Carolina yep. and uh, he's 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 winning, bro. He's retiring. He's going to go ham. And he's like, he's moving to the next level. Yeah, there's an opening. This is what the bills are. And you be the third partner and we'll teach you this and you'll fall in line. I was like. Okay, I think it was like eight, nine grand at the time. And I had like just that, literally. And I was like, here it is. And then started the learning lessons and all the <laughs> and all the like, why aren't we making money back? We're just I'm learning and we're breaking even. You know, but you don't see it, you don't see the long picture, right? You don't say, like, I'm learning this and in 10 years I'm gonna really know this craft. Right. It's you're hard. Like, you're like, dude, I put in six grand and now I got 6,300 back after I sold everything. And that's like, ended good. all and the that's work. that's like good because most businesses is like super delayed. You know what I mean? But I see what you're saying. So you got in that spot, you went thirds. How long did that last? A year. Because the reason he was getting out of it is because every year they said, hey, the landlord's going to come by once a year. You got to break everything down. So you guys just and then you can set it back up. Done. Yeah. You know? And you were happy to be done with the partners or what were you thinking? Yeah, it was stressful, bro. It was tough, huh? Yeah. So what was your plan after We lived that? together too. So we had, had to a grow the three of us. Yeah. So, so then I moved out of the fraternity house like six months into that, right? So we probably had six months while we worked at that house and all lived together. Wow. Yeah. 
But so you're going home to work together. We too. felt like we had something we couldn't tell to the world, which that, makes you feel high significance and scared to venture out and live with anybody or be around anybody that could know too much. Right. So we all live together. We don't talk to any, you it's know actually, what I'm saying? It's actually pretty smart. To be honest, bro, they were very militant. The yeah. They wouldn't even shake hands. Like some of the guys I remember wouldn't shake hands in public because they'd be like, people would be taking photos. Like I, I literally remember them being very militant when I came yeah. up. There's two different trashes. That's the first thing I learned. This is the bad trash this is the good trash. We even fake the good trash. We used to put trash. We would have to go out because we didn't have enough and like get stuff that we would throw a hey, throw that paper towel what thing away like and just put like put that out. Here's our trash yep. for the house. Just to give some trash. Yeah, bro. Like, but they taught me all that. That's the shit I was learning that whole time. So getting out of that spot, mm -hmm. what happened after that? You got your own spot? <sighs> no. So I was uh, at the time I was running that spot and. uh that the 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 white dude right from Ocala or whatever the 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 I had met the, the other kid and he had divulged like yo I'm growing too and you know this and that so that place actually shut down and he had someone had told me hey bro I got this plan you got decent credit we're gonna we're gonna what get a house yeah. Yeah. So you got a house. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. I had to say, yeah, yeah. I didn't know how. No, you got a house. Yeah. We got a house and, uh, and started lighting it up and, and you, you bought it. Yeah. Bought, yeah. Bought bought, yeah. Yeah. Bought a house. Figured I, out how to buy I had a house, been told. A house. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Exactly. And yeah, then, yeah. And then you lit that up. Now, were yeah. you in that solo? Yeah. Uh, at the time, no, we had this plan. Hey, we'll each have <laughs> one and we'll work together at each other's and we pool everything, even the profits. Everything's cut in thirds. It's three of us. Each of us have our own place. We'll help each other, but everyone has their own thing, right? Your name's on that. And we're going to build though. Then you're going to get two. He's going to get two. I'm going to get two. Then we're going to go three, 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 four, four, right? That was the plan. We just built. Got it. Right? Compound. And everything's in, internal. So like, don't talk to anybody. Like they're very militant, yeah. bro. I'm going to be yeah, honest. Yeah. And because uh, you know who I'm talking about. So it's a, you can kind of vibe it. And yeah. And and i allegedly know i yeah allegedly. I, I don't really know <laughs> <laughs> yeah one of them i don't know but this honest, all but this crazy of shit's of going on because at that time in florida it was wild bro so everyone i know is either getting in trouble there's raids there's this so it just felt like things were so crazy this life is such a crazy thing i i fell in love with this craft outside of this business school i'm going to right right why does it bring me this drama where I'm like, I mean, like literally, bro, like getting calls where picking up the phone, like get everything out of the house right now, bro. Get everything out. And I'm literally taking my bed sheet throwing, and I'm throwing everything on the middle, wrapping it up, throw it in my car, drive my car up to the gas station or wherever, park it, and then jog back to the house and just wait like, uh, okay, is it today? Is it today? And I, and then they would come, we'd wait and it'd be like, yeah, this just happened. And this guy just, and so. And this is how we're connected with him. And it was like, oh <laughs> my God. But bro, the thing that it was so tormented because I was like, yo, I love this. I yeah. love this thing. And it brings me so much drama that like, is this even, what do I do here? And then I realized it's not this, it's the people I'm around are bringing this. So I started to separate. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And start, and I'm gonna be honest for any grower, separating yourself from a pack of guys who also grow and can help you and and have it is tough a year and a half in two years in to grow oh three hell years, yeah two and a half years in about like that oh yeah. yeah so yeah started even just like me okay this is my first setup by myself not having any input how to hook lights up how to cut the holes then go into the attic you know all the little things i had help yo do that make sure that's none of that so then, then it gets real interesting. Then you really learn. Yeah, exactly, bro. Yeah. Then you really learn. So fast forward that a little bit. Talk about, you know, you went to Colorado. So after. Graduated from college. Yep. 2008, nine. I hear, yo, Colorado just went legal. And you can go out there and grow weed for a living. And you can be legal. And Pete, you can hire security and like 
this can be a real thing. Like you can be a businessman and like, you know, people could be proud of you and it can be this thing that you don't have to like have a secret is your whole life, right? Your whole yeah. life's not this secret that you, you can can't start owning it and shit. Cause as a grower, everyone has their, like what they really do for a living. Yeah. It's been that way up until a few years ago. I'd yeah. say. And that's rough. You really had to have a story. You're living a lie for a decade plus. It becomes like. I won't lie. We were going to launch this in like 2018. And I, I was like, no. Mm -hmm. Just because it was just like, it's still, you know, we're still a little early, but mm -hmm. I think we're here now. I think, I think, I yeah. think we're enough states are online now to where it's like, all right, get over it. Yeah. Normalize and legalize. You know what I mean? So Insane. You hear bad about Colorado. What opportunity did you have, and how did you how did you get out there? Like, what'd you do? Zero opportunity. I heard they went <clears throat> legal, and I heard there was, and I was like, if if this thing I love is going to be my life, and at that point I had had decided that this is what I'm going to do for a living and wherever it takes me. Um, packed up my shit, bro. Broke down my grow. Um, me and my girl broke up. I had been, we actually been living together, broke up and I drove out to Colorado. Holy shit. And, uh, yeah, got out to Colorado. Uh, well, first I had flown out there and found a house, right? Just to divulge. Sorry. And, uh, so first I had like maybe six months prior, I had started, to, I flew out there once or twice. I had always been snowboarding. I had always been going, it wasn't like random. I, I knew I wanted like, yo, I like that state. Yeah. Flew out there. And then like, Three months before I moved out there, I flew out there and one of my homies had already gone out there. And so I stayed with him in the basement and uh, I found a house, bro, rented it. And I was like, I'm going to be back. And I started paying and I was like, I'm going to be back in two, three months. I'm packing my shit. I'll be right back. And I went back, broke down the grow, got all the plants together. You know what I'm saying? Made sure my genetics Kept were safe. Alive. Make sure all that shit was alive. Made sure my, all my genetics were the alive. All right. Yeah, we well, yeah. You hook up a battery to a light. You find a little place. You don't know. give them too much. We're gonna, you guys got to get on the family plan if you want any of that. <laughs> no, but you kept your genetics alive, packed your whole shit up, and you yeah. drove straight to Colorado. You had a house waiting on you, ready to go. Bought a trailer, used trailer, put it behind my SUV at the time. Drove straight out there to that house, set up the basement, put the lights up, plants underneath. Okay, here we are. We're in Colorado. Was this one all you or you had partners? In? No, this is by myself. So this was all you at this point. Yeah. And so I had had my first crop. Let's say, okay, now I've been out there two, three months. I have, and I'll tell you how, what you're, and uh, I took my stuff to a, at that time, you could sell your stuff to dispensaries, right? It was the same as how California used to be. So you could harvest flour and then literally take your goods into the dispensary and be like, yo, this is my best work. Yeah. And so I go in and guess what's on the shelf? Pres presidential Kush, and I'm like, hold on, that's my that's my crew, that's my crew from back in Florida, that's our crew. See what I'm saying? When you got something and it's your crew and only your crew has that strain, and then you move to a different state and you and it's the strain, you're like, and so I told the bud tender at the time, will you do me a favor and tell? And I said him by name. I said, you tell him that. I said, what up? And uh, they looked at me like, okay. And I think about an hour or two later, I got a phone call and it was like, cause I said, yo, tell him I said, welcome to Colorado. That's what I said. <laughs> <laughs> you know me. That's a funny. I idea. said, yo, tell, you know, buddy, uh, you know, welcome to Colorado. And then I get a call and he's like, yo, what up? You know? And I'm like, yeah, I'm out here. Are you out here? And he was like, yeah. You know? Cause I mean, just to divulge back. <coughs> Things ended very crazy back in Florida uh, before Colorado. My mentor had been raided and uh, we lost Florida Juicy Fruit and the raid. We A lot of shit got really crazy. So that was kind of, to be honest, we our team had broken up and uh, we had been broken up for about a year or two. And then I moved to Colorado only to find out that presidential Kush is on the shelf at this dispensary. And we kind of there was a little bit of history too with the dispensary that we knew one of the guys that worked there. So I knew, okay, he must have called him and there's something here. Right. You know? Yeah. So yeah, just started. The thing about growers, bro, is you can literally pick up and move anywhere and start and you will find a, you'll be all right. You will be okay. 
If you, if you, if you know how to grow, if you know how to grow, I, I mean, you know, that's a really freeing thing to know. Like I, I swear to God, I've thought that a couple of times where I, cause it applies to other things too. But I mean, you can move anywhere. I can move to a different country and take, take some genetics with you, some seeds. You'll be all right, bro. You will be all right. Straight up. Yeah. So you're in Colorado. Yeah. You're booming a basement. Let's go. Young black leaf. Yeah. Gaining his stripes. Trying to get in dispensary. Business. Trying to get into dispensaries in Colorado. What's going on? You, you go to put your first deal together. I know you had your stepdad come out, try to work it out. Shout out to Mr. Joe. We love you. Um, yeah, we had tried to make it work, man. We uh, They put moratoriums, bro. They would like say, these licenses are open for six months. And at the end of six months, that's the end of the licenses forever. And so by the time we got our ducks in a row and were able to bring in a businessman who could actually help us and find some funding and, and that it was, we were literally up against like a week or two and it was just like, so just mi- missed it. Yeah. So how long was your Cal- or Col- Colorado run? Three years. Two and, at, two and three Stayed quarters. out there about three years, had a few deals fall through. Yes, exactly. Was selling to the dispensary. Well, then it went, it went like how it did here where they couldn't take any flour anymore. So about a year into three years, a year in, no more flour on the shelves. It's all regulated. We have to have our own grows, just like here. And so everyone goes underground and there's this whole, and it was like, yo, I'm doing the same thing I was doing in Florida because I'm, I can get in less trouble. And I'm out here in the middle of nowhere and it's cold as hell. Talk about that. What was your experience like and in Colorado? Some, and like, yeah. what, what would you say to anyone that's like, like picking Colorado to move to? I mean, I like Colorado as a state. It's just, I'm from Florida and I'm a Florida boy. And I even know guys that live out there that are, fr- and if you gave them a chance to move back to a sunny, you know what I'm saying? They would be like, okay, let's go. But I mean, it, people say, oh, well, it's the winter. But it's like six, seven months of winter, you know, because cold is cold. Like winter is winter. Like it, it lasts a long time in a lot of places and it gets dark early. It's just growing up by a beach where it's warm and you're growing. And I'm going to be honest, like I didn't move to Colorado because I was scared to be in Florida. I moved to Colorado because I wanted to own a dispensary and be proud of having a business. So when I had to fall back and be like, oh, this is the same shit. And I get six months instead of a year and a half in jail i'll just go back to florida so you at this point three years you're out trying there. to though the whole time trying to get in the business trying Miss to figure the timing out. i had that. done work though for some dispensaries we had you know at the time let me dive you know at the time bro we were making bubble hash this is you remember you telling me this. yeah and we're making bubble hash it's freezing out we're doing it in the garage and uh then we're letting it, we're putting it into pucks. 24 hours later, it's like a putty. We're getting, first it started with silk screens, but then we moved into uh, parchment paper and we would get a six ton press, like how you would carjack, but it's a press for bearings. And we w- I went to a metal shop and said, can you cut me 12 inch plates, like a half inch thick? They weighed like 55 pounds each, bro. There's not, put them in the oven for an hour. And we would put that puck in the middle with parchment and put that jack down and we would be making rosin but it wasn't squirting out rosin we would press that thing into basically a fruit roll up that was like glistening and it was all you know melted heads but it yeah. and we were cutting it into strips and dispensaries were like figuring out how to get it into dispensary you know that it was wow. selling like crazy we're what making were a trim it? Oh, bubble hash we were giving it the different u's like this is 40u yeah. 90u 120 160 yeah. Wow. Yeah. Crushing it. But it just felt like I'm doing all this background work. I can do everything that re- is really needed for these shops. Like I need to go regroup. And I had had some homies from Florida saying like, yo, move back, bro. We we could use you back here. <laughs> you know, hold on. I may know those homies. <laughs> um, so you're in Colorado. You're basically free agent at this mm-hmm. point. You're looking for a change. You're sick of the cold. You move back to Florida. Yeah. You packed your shit all the way back to back up. Did the same thing all over and did again. The same by genetics. Everything all yep. the way back to Florida. Yep. So go back to Florida and you keep the vibes alive. I pulled right into a grow house. Ready to go. 
Um, well, a spot that was ready, ready to go. Like, hey, man, it's 50, yours. Fifty fifty, it's yours. You want it? <laughs> I said, yeah, let's do this. I the whole trailer behind me is full of grow equipment. My car was full of clones and all my belongings. Um, and then I shipped a pod. Which Those is, are all your belongings. Yeah, it was. I'm gonna be honest. For any grower, right? That's really living yeah. the life. And yeah. so, uh, yeah, man. And it was like, yo, we got this out. Crazy story. I broke my axle. I'm loaded my trailer down, driving with all this shit across country, pulling into Kansas. And I hit a fucking bump on the road. And I'm like, whoa, you know, next thing I know, I pull in to get some gas and some guy walks in. He goes, is that your vehicle? And I'm all, you know, I'm thinking like, holy shit, I got, (laughs) you know, and uh, he goes, your, your axles broke. And I'm like, I'm in the middle of Kansas. And I'm like, what do you mean? And he's showing me how this thing's rubbing. You got, you should stop right here. I wouldn't even drive to the next <coughs> town. I'm like, I got cloned. I mean, this is the middle of nowhere. I drove to the next town with a broken axle, like praying, literally probably continuously praying the whole time. I pull into town, middle of nowhere <coughs> with a broken axle. Crazy story. We'll get into another time, but I end up spending six. 10 days in the middle of Kansas getting my axle fixed with clone trays in a hotel room. Yeah, like multiple. <laughs> I'm raising plant. <laughs> you know me. That's why you're laughing. Because you know it's like, oh, fuck. what motel is it? Middle of nowhere. Bro. It wasn't even it? a name like we would know. It was like, you know, Sally's. Were you, what were you like? Were you like, were you like guarding the room and shit? Okay, so now I really trip you out. <laughs> So I know this from past being in Florida, because when hurricanes would come, we would have to take because sometimes we would know like we're about to lose this crop. The hurricane knocked out the power when hurricane. So we would take our clones and move them to the hotel room. And because the hotels always had power, they had generators. So we would get a room and all. But we knew that even if you put the little sign on, they sometimes still come in. Yeah. So I was taking duffel bags and putting the clone domes in and zipping them up and leaving them in the corner when I would leave. Cause I had to get food. It, it, you know, you're there. I knew 10 days. Okay. Four days in. It's a Memorial day weekend. It's probably like a Monday. It's on Memorial day. And I wake up and what was cool is it's such a boutique hotel. They would put like water with lemons or limes or fruit in it. And you, so in the morning I'd wake up and so I'd bad. walk out. Yeah, yeah. And take my sandals with some, you know, gym shorts mm-hmm. and a tee, go get a cup of water, start my metabolism. Right. And uh, I got 12 domes that have been chilling all night while I was slept. Right. You know, they're out, they're out. Cause I'm still here. And I walk into the middle of the hotel and there's 35 to 40 SWAT team guys in full garb. And she's like, I literally started going slow motion. <laughs> and I, I, I must, my eyes must have been, and I look at the lady and I go, everything all right? <laughs> and she goes, oh yeah, they're doing a, a DUI stop right here and pulling people off the highway for the holiday for Memorial Day. She's like, this is the staging point. And I'm like, good to know. <laughs> I literally went in my room and I was afraid to order food because I was afraid I would open the door and they, I literally just sat there. <laughs> For a whole day. I mean, that was my, yeah, bro. So 10 days of that, and I get back to Florida and I pull into a grow out. I'm like, <laughs> welcome back to Florida. <laughs> Holy fuck. Oh, yeah. Yo, I never got into the actual story. Oh, of it like goes how deep. You, how you saw them or whatever. And yeah. That happened. I remember you oh. saying something about Kansas and stuff, but. Bro, I took my axle to the fuck. first guy and he goes, we got a week back order on act like to get you in the, the auto service and I, you know and I'm, I'm like a, I'm like what if I give you 500 bucks can you get my shit fixed he like stops working turns around he goes I don't know where you're from but we don't do that around here he goes I think you should leave and I'm like yo this is the only mechanic in town and, and so then I had to go and exit up to find another mechanic who would fix my axle because I tried to like bribe him to skip the line Oh, like that's how middle of nowhere I was at, you know, it was a crazy 10 days and, and I'm with domes of three strains, presidential Kush, golden goat, DJ shorts flow. Oh <laughs> yeah. There you have yeah. it. Yeah. The three bangers. 
which speed the story up. Talk a little bit about how you felt being back in Florida and shit once you got things going and everything. Oh man, it was fucking back to business. It was beautiful, bro. It was like, it's warm. It's what I know. People love good weed. Um, I grow fire, you know? So it was just like, it was just like fill the void. Right. And uh, the homies were all stoked to have me back. To be honest, that was like a, and that felt really good, right? To be back around guys that were like, it felt like, like they wanted me back and we were like back in a crew and got back in the gym and, you know, just got back, back into life. The swing of things were back there. I was so focused on, on this and trying to get this made, you know, you lose track of other things. Absolutely. Yeah. So, but popping bro, growing. And that's, I mean, and then somewhere in the mix there, me and you meet. (laughs) So you are in your spot. Mm-hmm. I know somebody you know. Mm-hmm. And one morning for breakfast, mm-hmm. first watch. I was invited and I met you. Yeah. And you started teaching me, not me, you just started talking about um BHO mm-hmm. and open blasting and just just wax. And I was like, oh. You know, and I, I wasn't really on that yet. My mind wasn't really on any of that yet. And that because I'm not a, I w- obviously wasn't a grower. Um, but I had a situation and you didn't know I had the situation because these are times when, you know, you don't talk about your situations really. So it took months. This is still a while back. It took months. Yeah, this is a long time back. So it took yeah. months. But I think what me and you, I got your number, eventually got mm-hmm. your number. I remember we went to dinner one night and I saw like, some AC ducting in the back of your uh, SUV. And I was like, yeah, it's a hundred. He's definitely got to grow hundred percent, you know? Yeah. Which I already knew, you know, kind of, but I, in my head it was like, I didn't have any hard proof, but that was like hard proof for me. So I was like, okay. But it was a lot of time of us just smoking and talking and man, a lot of nights spent us smoking, talking about what we were going to do in life. Above just weed, you know? Yeah, because at the time, it was other things, too. Absolutely, because we started a a t-shirt brand Mm -hmm. first um, in Orlando. We decided that was the wrong place to do it. And then we decided, you're a grower. Mm -hmm. I wanted to start a a clothing brand. Let's do the best of both worlds. Let's go to LA. Yeah. And we moved to LA. You know, we obviously old- had to do what we had to do to get to that point. Yeah. And we had a partnership prior to that. Yeah. That was successful. That helped us get to that point. Mm-hmm. Um, but to, let me divulge for a second. The stuff I learned with you, it wasn't my dream to get into clothing. And I, I've, I feel like there's been chapters where like you do things that maybe aren't exactly your dream or like, oh, doing cars, right? Or this. I learned so much that it became a second passion to me. It literally is like, I love weed and growing weed and all that that comes with weed. And then right under that, I love making apparel and designing, dude. Like, and I never had that in my life until you brought that in and we were going to classes and flying and and going to classes with like Jerry Lorenzo and back in like 2012, what, 2013. Nikki Diamonds yeah. and like, uh, who back. else was it? Johnny Cupcakes and Jeff Staple. Jeff everybody. Staple. And then the, John the leather, Buscemi. The John Buscemi. Everybody. Spencer. Uh, I mean, literally. And I have learned. Spencer. Yeah. yeah. And I, yeah. Kill Spencer. And I literally, bro, it, it opened a new door in my creative path. It and showed you that like people can be successful just by creating. Yes. We you were know? going to shows and we're seeing guys. We were like, like we were like going to agenda trade show mm-hmm. where it's not open to the public, like paying people for their wristbands and shit. Yeah. In Long Beach. And that was the We're beginnings of our there. Cali trips. Mm-hmm. So we'll talk about that a little bit because we had this debate going on whether we should go to Miami or LA. Yeah. During Florida was going to vote medical cannabis in. Now we were waiting for that. It lost by 2%. Oh. So we were going to make a move with that. We had your stepdad ready with looking at real estate, everything. He was going to make the real estate play. We were going to handle the grow in. That failed by 2%. Couldn't wait anymore. So we thought... About eight go, years ago, do we nine years ago? Yeah, do yeah. we do we go to Miami and wait, or mm-hmm. do we come to LA? Mm-hmm. Now, ironically, you wanted to go to Miami. Yeah, I, I'm a sucker for Spanish women, and uh, <laughs> and I also just 
I've already moved from out of Florida. Like, are we about to do this again? And you know, my a parents big, a hear big, this. A big thing was was it's all the way across the country. And my you parents are like, "Oh, you're about to do this again? Oh, again? You just did this, <coughs> and it didn't work out. You're about to do it again." Yeah, that's kind of how it felt. But I believed in you. I still do. I always, obviously, I always will. And I knew even if it wasn't t-shirts, me and you, the chemistry we have in business and how we work together and how we create together is not how other people do it. It's a, it's a rare thing, bro. It's like putting two batteries. Not every battery matches up with the rest. And next thing you know, we come together and like, I still think if we would have focused on shirts, we would have been successful, bro. This is what's crazy is that it just wasn't meant to be. And we were at the wrong place out here in LA. This is the land of prosperity. This, this is the land of opportunity. In my opinion. Absolutely. You could start a clothing company out here with a, a dream and a dime. We, we weren't getting that in Florida. No, and we 100%. knew we needed to move. We knew 100%. that. And you talked to me. You said, bro, we took multiple come trips out here. We took multiple trips yeah. to both places. Mm-hmm. And at the end of it, it was really clear where Cali. we needed to go. Dude. So, West Coast. You know, and this is the first time we're dropping this shit, but um, we come to LA. We came out, we got a house. Yeah. Got with yeah, a realtor. Airbnb. Thank God. Got with a realtor. Um, Went to Arcadia. Shout out to my Asian community. Hell yeah. They Great embrace spot. us from the jump in, in Cali. We wouldn't be here without you guys straight up. But we had a little basement situation. Yep. We and didn't it, even and, know. And it was a four guy. No, we did know. Did we was, know? It, yeah. We, we okay. Knew. Okay. We, had, we needed. We, it was a necessity. <laughs> it, was a, it was a four guy moving into a four bedroom house. We took the whole crew. We were like, we got to go know. with the whole team comes with us. So. Grand scheme of things, mm-hmm. great plan. Yep. Four guys moving out there, except er, I had a little bit of legal trouble and I couldn't make it. Yeah. I had to go be incarcerated for four months. So, and that turned even longer because of yeah, everything in the situation. Because I still had to stay back in Florida after that. Right. So, yeah. um, Blackleaf started and I was, I was in jail. We had a warehouse at the time, though, that was already ready to go. Like we had a, we were moving into. So everything was set at that time. We were, we had actually, you know, got into a situation where we had an opportunity for a warehouse out here almost at the same time we were moving out here. And me and you, instead it just of saying, worked itself out. Yeah, literally just worked itself out. Me and you saying, shit, let's take it. Let's see what we can do with this. So we get out here and then it was like, yeah. and then it was like, yo, I've only done houses before. We're about to do a warehouse and you're and you're not with me. My like ride or die homie who Yeah, like, that was a big rocking. part of the problem. Well, it was just scary. It was like, yeah. oh shit, okay. This everything counts now. Nothing like everything counts, right? Like this yeah. has to has to hit. It was pretty fucked up. Well, no, <laughs> it was just it was fucked up for you. It was just everything's on the line right now. Yeah. This has to go like this. It was crucial. There's one way. It was like crucial. there was a lot on the line, and, from- and so we moved into a building yeah. that was pre-built out, pre pre-equipped, and we didn't change any of that. And that's very big hard lessons for anyone. Yeah, for anyone listening or watching this at home right now, if you buy a pre-existing structure, pre-existing build out, I would say uh, Blackleaf would agree that you should have it respect and re- renovate it to your needs. Um, and not just go with the flow because of time or something, because listen, get it right the first time and you'll be good. We learned that Nightmare. lesson. Definitely. Nightmare situation. <clears throat> because we wanted to just get, get going and we didn't know, you know, we were learning, right? We didn't know. Well, you get into a room that's not built. Like it's some guy built it. Who's not really a grower. Right. And he's like, yeah, build us out some grow rooms and they're not right for growing completely so we're it's having like to build. make things work and why are these two the the lights this is too many lights for this area and then they're that's also too skinny and it was just multiple avenues of like this isn't really the right scenario and you but you learn that as you're going which any entrepreneur knows that just costs you money and time so that's Absolutely. what we were doing 100%. i was learning on the fly as well cuz going i'm gonna say as a grower Going, my hardest learning lesson, not from a seed to the, was going from houses to warehouses. That was 
a whole, it's literally a whole new welcome. Here's another 10 years. You ready? Yeah. Like, you know, or five, right? If you're full time. Right. So, yeah, it was literally that, bro. It was like, here's another five years of you got to learn this now. This is not like that. This is completely different. Everything's scaled. Everything's more. Everything's more expensive and everything has to be hardwired in or so. What what bet ranking. what bet do we make for the first run? So, Even though I was in jail too, this is to show you motherfuckers <laughs> yeah. how real I am and how long I've been keeping it real. That God's a real one, bro. I don't got to say it too much, but tell them about the first bet we make while I'm in jail, mind you. Yo, <laughs> it's like yo, if you I was do, calling everyone. He's like yo, I, you won't do two a light, and we're like <laughs> yeah, I do two a light, and he was like yo, first run. I was like yeah, first run. He was like, yo, if you do two a light, if you can, he's like, I'll bet you a Rolex. I'm going to buy you a Rolex. Yeah, I'm going to buy you a Rolex. A gold Rolex. First run. And we're like, game on. And And this motherfucker got like 81. He got like one pound over. No, it wasn't. It was like 83. So it was like, it was definitely like two or three. No, it was two or three. It wasn't that close. Went and got you that gold yacht master. Yeah. It's a little few months later. I had to get situated. I had to come home and shit. Oh, there was a lot. I I had to get home first. You know what I mean? But I definitely got you the old gold yacht master. We were also at that time, though, trying to get in dispensaries. A hundred percent. So like uh, taking bags the, in the first, the first crop, that was the first crop. Coming I went down. to the jungle boys. I went in hey, and shout I was out like, to the jungle boys, man. For real. Yeah. For real. We remember. I literally, well, this is, we the appreciate thing. it Let though. Me give for a real. lesson to somebody. Cause it like, like yeah. this was during the OG wave and we came with like sativas and shit. We had no clue. We it were was just, all exotics. This is a kind of another thing is we just stayed true to what we had and what we knew. And we just rode out with what we could do you know, in the beginning and the brand. And it wasn't about the apparel, obviously, because of what we were going through and us needing to get the real product out, which was the cannabis, the concentrates, everything else. It wasn't even about fancy strains. It was about grow these the best you can grow. It was about having good ass herb. Yeah. And that's what we had. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, went into shops and had hella shops fucking play games with us, bro. Even at the time, making come Or just say, hey, you know, you know, we're good, you know? Or, but yeah, but like take samples and then just know, I mean like pounds. We would give away, I would give away like a pound of weed in, in eighth samples in jars that said black leaf with labels. And at this time, this is, um, this is about <coughs> eight, nine years ago. So this is way before the wave was like, put your shit in a jar and put a label on it. And so we were dropping samples. You were just bringing a turkey bag. But then I got, this is what changed the game for me, to be honest, with that side. My stepfather, who's my mentor in business, my current one, right? He says, he told me a story about a guy in Spain who had a sock business. And it paralleled to mean this, make a list of the top five or 10 dispensaries in all of LA. You don't get in any shelves until you get in those shelves. Once you get in there, everyone else will fall in line. Instead of climbing to the top, which you might never get there because then you have everyone else and the top stores don't want to work with you, get in the top shops and everyone else will fall in line. And so that's literally buds and roses. We went there and they gave us our first shot. We I dropped off presidential Kush, right? And it was funny at the time we didn't have trimmers. We were working with what we had, just like mm-hmm. you said, they called me back the next day and they said, this is the best weed we've bought or seen in months, the worst if not trim years. Job. And this is the worst trim yeah. job we've seen in the same yeah. amount of time. Or like, this is a, like a Bugatti engine and a, and a Honda. Literally. A Honda and they were saying, but this weed is phenomenal and it's selling. And so if you can just figure this out, we will continue to take this. And so we started to build that. And once Buds and Roses gave us that, which was one of my crown jewel of like, I looked up to Buds and Roses so much before we got here. And when we got here, they were Kyle Cushman and some of the people they've had as their head growers and some of the the history they have as an LA dispensary, it can't be forgotten. Like they are a staple. They, they were the ones out of 50 plus dispensaries, bro, 50 plus, maybe 75 plus, they were the only one who said, yeah, we'll put it on the shelf. And if it sells, we got you. Like, let's see how it goes. They, cause they knew it was fire and they didn't bullshit me cause they have their grow and they, they're afraid to sell our shit next to their shit. There's so much politics behind the scenes that dispensaries don't tell you growers. And once you get to really see what's up, it's just a shame. 
They don't want your shit because it's so fire to compete with their stuff because they just had a crop. Uh, you know, it's our stuff won't sell as fast. They were the ones who said, yeah, let's put it out. And so, like, I'll never forget that, bro. Uh, you know, never forget that part of it where, like, they opened it up and, and dude, people loved it. And it was for us, honestly, then we started getting into shops. Absolutely. Things came around, worked out the legal troubles, got out here. And then the sessions started rolling in. Secret sesh. And just, just And just the cups, you know, chalice. Chalice, unbelievable. And then the, and just like the community, bro, the community was strong, man. Like we had such, we had companies like Critical. We had Gold Coast, right? We had all these collabs we were doing. There was a lot more just uh, community events, I would say. And, and, and I mean, obviously, we all know why, you know, that's had been put a damper yeah. on. But I think it took a big toll on LA. Big it did. Time, Dude, you know? it used to be like the, the, the most epic farmer's market for weed, where everyone had their own spin or their now own Now it's strength. not even safe. No, no, it's different now, man. It's definitely been it changed. sucks. You know what I mean? They're starting In to try sense. to get stuff back, but the city doesn't want to allow it, which is crazy. Just tax it and charge money and let the city get their take and let us do these events and let us have fun. Let us actually have lounges. Insane. Can you imagine us selling alcohol and not having one bar? No, there's no bars. Can't have them, but we'll sell you alcohol. You can go that home would, and that drink would be, it in your house. That would... That would be a fucked up society. Just, you know what I'm saying? It's just a depressing thing, though. No think one about would that. have anywhere to go. But think about that. Like, yeah, you can have it. You can go t- take it home and scurry back to your, you know what I'm saying, like house. And you could don't do not do it out in the public, though, or anywhere around anyone, like, regular. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, that's the feeling. So, like, open that shit up. This is L.A. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's I agree. crazy. I agree. You could embrace it, and this could be the epicenter. And it's like, yeah, LA, man. It's always, they need it. I mean, they yeah. honestly need it right now. I would say. Oh, it's crazy. I mean, help. I'm the waiting it out. I'm waiting it out, LA. I, I want you guys to to, to reclaim the throne. But the man, I'm cannabis. also looking for the next place too. Like at the same time, I don't Michigan's know. Michigan's cranking, bro. I, the winter there. Too, I ain't gonna say it's know? Cali. Nothing's Cali yeah. because. You meet see, I'm, not, see I'm not about the winter either, really. Yeah, like, no. Coming from Florida. Everyone has honest. amazing fire. You can grow fire anywhere. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Anywhere in the world you can grow fire. It's about the person and the setup and what they're growing. It's it's not about the place. This is just everyone I meet is like, no, I'm from here, but I came here for this. Yeah. That's what makes it different. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, Yeah. All the ta- tastemakers and, and, and the, sh- the movers and shakers are still definitely- you know, for the most part here in the West, for sure. Oh, strong. You know, it's strong here. It's just not everyone can pop up and pop their head out anymore. Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? hundred percent. And a lot of people took jobs with, with brands to make these brands work. I know a lot of guys that have their brand, but are working a job for a, another company just to be like, all right, well, you know, until I'm, until I can get my brand in. Right. Yeah. What a, being out here now, mind you, the warehouse we got was in downtown LA, where we got, we're where we're filming right now, live in downtown LA, and we got blackmailed by the owner for months um, and months and months. That comes along with it. He know who know who guy. you're getting in business with. He was an interesting guy. I hope you see this. Oh, I mean, <laughs> we did though. It was crazy. Dude was like, know who you're getting into business with. We had a sublease, right? So we had to lease from somebody. That had this spot and we realized like, damn, this guy's got us by the balls now. We just, we're in this grow that we have all this money invested and this guy is the one whose name's on the lease. Holy hell. So talk <laughs> about, talk about the experience though. I mean, talk about, you know, you, you, we come out, we know a lot about branding at this point. So we knew what we were going to do branding wise. We had been to the events. I scoped it out. You scoped it out. I knew I was very confident. Like, okay, we know what to do because we've been studying clothing. And everything in street wearing clothing pretty much applies to cannabis because it's street culture. Branding is branding across all platforms. It is. You got to know your demographic, right? But, there you go. So we, we, we came in strong in that. And talk about just the warehouse situation, ha- learning how to move in downtown LA um and how to just adjust to just the cali life having new new people with you that 
that didn't never grew before, you know. <laughs> so we the guys that had come out with us, shout out Grow Generation. Uh, the guys that had come out yeah, with us. Keeping us hydrated. This room. Yeah, for real. Appreciate that and Power for SI. For real, for real. For real. I'm about to drink some Power <laughs> SI. Yeah, yeah. You want the Power SI bottle? Yeah. <laughs> uh, the guys that had come out with us had never grown before. Um, they were helpers at a spot previous to that, but had moved out to Cali with us. So I was jumping new growers. Amazing in. guys, by the way. Shout no, solid individuals. You. Yeah. My my little cousin. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? For real. Don't give them too much. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but uh, we were jumping them in as far as like, hey, man, this is my passion. This is what I do for a living. And you're about yeah. to learn this firsthand with 40 lights. Here we go. And uh, <laughs> we also live together. So she gets stressful, bro. And uh, when you're invested into someone's dream and everything's on the line, all their money and all their everything, any sidestep. You know, as a young kid, you want to, you know, it's tough, man. It's a weird balance, right? Because I, I just as entrepreneurs is what I'm looking at, you know, people out there that are chasing some dream and it's just like, um, don't take it out on the guys around you. If they don't it's hard, buy man. into your dream, it's the same much as you, right? It's I'm learning, I'm learning and not to digress too much, yeah. but I'm learning later in life that like, you really need your own space to just mm -hmm. decompress, especially as a creative especially if you're working with the people you really at least need to be able to go around people you're not working with at the minimum you know just for anyone out there that's listening just from experience what i see for everyone not just myself not just him mm -hmm. um and I, you know i go through little phases where i like you know things happen you want to help people out or whatever and and you know, or it makes sense because it's expensive. You have to, right? Yeah. You have to make sacrifices, right? It's LA. not even about helping people out, right? So, you know, that's just one of those things. So it was it was rough in that sense of management wise and work wise and day the expectations. To day. And the fact that it's a brand new situation. Mm -hmm. So And I was struggling. Speak I was struggling to learn how to control my environment. I was struggling to learn how to get my veg times down and have a smooth transition. How do we have is it's me and two other guys. How do we get this cropped and how do we turn this around in 24 or 48 hours and not have three, four, five, six a week downtime. Right. And then at the same time, who's going to trim all this weed. Right. So we're figuring out all this as we're we running go, and gunning. but we figured it out and it takes time. Don't get down on yourself. It takes time and it's going to be a struggle. For everyone, it is. For the best, it is. Yeah. So come on. How, how's it going to be for people that have our you, you bankroll in there? You can't cheat the hustle. There you go. You, so you really can't. But that's why I shout out Buds and Roses. They gave us an opportunity where then other people fell in line, which let us step back from worrying about what are we going to do with all this fire, which is crazy to think of. Well, we had to get to that point. Too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had to find tremors. We had to find a place to grow it. We had to <sighs> dial in the growing. What strains get the packaging, mm -hmm. you know. Meanwhile, you're building we got an office. We hired a graphic designer from the corporate side. We learned a lot about that too. We all on our own dime, by the way. Oh, yeah. No, this is bootstrapped 100 percent Anything that comes in, it comes you watch it go like this. You say, Oh, you maybe get to touch it, and then it keeps going. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta dig in the other pocket. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, you want this? Oh, yeah. You but, want my phone? So so we we had we had it up to two buildings. Er, yeah, everything. and we had so we had we knew we needed an office. So we said, let's let the office pay for itself. So let's go ahead and get an office building where we can throw up some lights. We need to expand our veg and our genetics anyway. I'm sorry, so, George, you're watching this, man. We definitely shout out the second <laughs> landlord. <laughs> uh, but yeah, and so we got this office. But again, um, for the second or third time now, you know, with clothing company, with this, we've hired graphic designers and learn the hard way what a wrong graphic designer will do when we don't have focus or you don't have an exact you know and just well, you need someone with feng shui like we learned that now like the creative has to have some style like yes. if your creative doesn't have much style i hate to tell you it's going to be hard well let me tell you how i found my the graphic designer i am now i literally kept battling with like pushing people further into like do a cooler design do more put more stuff on it. Why don't like do a graphic? And I was like, man. And so I met this guy that worked for a heavy metal record company and he did their graphic design. 
And his designs were so intense and like elaborate. And like, I was like, yo, and I know heavy metal. I'm a big heavy metal fan that I was like, I'm going to be able to just rein him back and it'll be perfect. And he has style. When you have a lot of style, even if I have you do something else, it still comes out, right? Or, or no, it correlates, you know, it correlates. Yeah. So getting in the end of the building and the lease is running up on the building. And we got through all that. Talk about some of the break-ins and stuff and some of the things that we dealt with on that tip while having this building. And, so, and, and, yeah. and for the record, oh. this is my brother for life, but this was a big part of why I took a break and split away from Blackleaf. And now I did that with honor as well. And you know we've kept everything smooth. But the break-ins were like, I, like number break in number five was like, like a bad one, and then and that was it. But talk about some. Well, of that, and then you know? besides that, talk it was about just... like holding the fort down because like for a couple of years we didn't have any issues. It was fine, mm-hmm. and then it was like for we got, two years, yeah, and then it was like we got marked, yeah, and it was they were like selling we're us out to other after gangs that, or shit. right? Yeah. Like it just like it was like they knew our schedule and shit. Mm-hmm. It was bad. Well, we had it on the doors. So what had happened was. <laughs> Like our doors, I had painted the top of the door as like Don't a, do that. Well, heads up. But yeah, don't do it. But if <laughs> you have a sec- security, or just have a security guard. And so like we hadn't had one at the time, but we had a, a real lockdown building. Like it was yeah. a secure building. But what they're doing and what they do in LA is they go roof to roof and they break in through the roof. They literally like it's basically drywall and boards and shit and they hammer through it. And so we learned the hard way. Yeah, they and they got us where any grower will know this. We were about to have everything taken off site to get trimmed and it was supposed to get done on a Sunday. And I I had a feeling it wasn't going to be 100 percent dry. And we were like, yo, let's just do it Monday. We're all going to be there anyway. And it was like I was going to go by myself and do 40 pounds or 30 pounds of binning by myself. And I was like, yo, I'll just go Monday. And they got us that night and they cleared out the whole warehouse and our whole dry room full of flour. And and that was like, that wasn't a bad situation per se. That was a loss. I look at that as a loss. We reset. We, we, that was a loss. And we had a guy in there and he was sleeping in there and shout out to our guy. Crazy. And he He slept slept through the whole whole thing thing. and he didn't get touched. And he wasn't the one that was involved in it. He's my little cousin. He had nothing to do with it. It's a family member. But yeah. And it was thank, on camera. Thank God he didn't get fucked with that night, right? Oh, no. That was a big deal. Pop. That was a big deal to me because he came to me after he was real scared. He was fucking. He didn't I mean, wanna, you sleep. He didn't want to go back. He didn't want to go back to the spot after that. Which I understand. You know, you're getting paid very little money. So then I started like, sleeping there, fucking it. You know, but <laughs> fast forward to the two. It happened a few more times. Well, they had but tried, the last time it was attempted. The, the last time was an it was a failed attempt. Talk us through what happened that well, night. Me and you were kind of finishing off with Blackleaf at that time, just to be honest. You know, it was and, it was getting it was getting and I, to the point of a. I was a also moving in the road. I, well, and I was all we were living together at the time, and I was also like on my like a. Hey, it's time for you to move out as well, and so. It had, there was very much like, okay, this is the only thing I have. This has to work out. Cause like, you're going to go do your own thing. You'll be fine. Right. This is my dream. I have to pursue this and this has to work. And now, four, usually it's between four and 5 a.m. I've had this happen a lot of times. This isn't the first time because back in the day, too, I'd had some issues with partners in Florida. Um, 4 30 in the morning, my phone goes off and it's the alarm. And it's saying there's a break in. And I know what's, I know just from, I look at the time and I know it's the same time every time. So I ran, I literally throw a shirt on a a black leaf hoodie, my one that's like dripping, you know? And I said, fuck it. And I ran to my truck and I went like 120 miles an hour from Pasadena or a little bit closer than Pasadena, you know, at that time um, to the warehouse. And I pull up and I, when I rip up to the gate, um, the gate's closed and my clicker's not working to open the actual like front gate. So I pull to our next door neighbor and I know the gate's not working, but everything looks fine. But then I see a light in our, and I can see they rammed our, our gate that had come down. They rammed it. And then so it's Roll off the, the track and you can see light shining through the corner now that I'm parked on the side <clears throat> and the front gate 
was off the hinges, just laid up. And so I didn't know that till I grabbed the gate to try to pull it to the side because my clickers and it fell on me. And so it's this huge wrought iron gate. And so I catch it. And with, I, I swear to God, all my might, I just push it to the side and I run up to the door and I kick on the door a few times. And I say, the cops have been called. I got a gun. You need to fucking get the fuck out of here. And I kick the door like, boom, boom, boom. Right. Yeah. And I'm thinking they're coming out. I got no gun or nothing, you know, yeah. and I run over to the side of my truck and I basically was on the side of my truck waiting for them to come flying out. No one comes out. Waited for like 30 seconds. Nothing. So I fucking run back over and I push through and we have this huge like 50 foot curtain. So you could open the front door of the building and you couldn't see inside. Right. And so I played football and everything. I I'm in full sprint mode. You know me. You've we've been around each other. I go into even coming out of Colorado. I am sprinting out. When we're throwing. I I go into sprint mode and I come up under the curtain. And as I like football, throw my arm up under the curtain. Within five feet, there's a guy with a bin of weed. And I'm a big guy and I'm moving full speed. And I swing and connect and I. I literally hit the bin and and we go tumbling over each other, right? So I'm I'm swing, we hit, I go tumbling over this guy. Soon as I stand up, there's punches being thrown from like different angles, right? So I'm swinging, 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 right? Just at everybody. I don't know. And then I literally feel a gun and everyone stops swinging and I feel a gun against the back of my head. Uh start to walk to the back of the, you know, I put my hands up and they're like, get down on the fucking floor. And uh, the rest of them are yelling, shoot him. Right. Yeah. And I back up, back up and there's a wall and there's floor flex. And I stumbled into the floor flex. And when I did that, he tried to pistol whip me and mm -hmm. I grabbed just out of response. I grabbed his arm and the gun and locked down on it. Right. So then we went to the ground, like both of us just, wrestled to the ground right and all i felt was the gun get pulled from beneath my like through my arms you know yeah. and i kept waiting to get shot in the like i got up and our rooms had like just enough space where you could run between them and i kept getting weight to like get shot in the back right i ran hit the back wall ran to the front of the warehouse and even then I was like, I'm going to get shot running out. Right. Like, you know, like I come running out and ran out the front door, go to the side of my truck. At this point, I'm like bleeding from here, bleeding from my knees, my elbows, I think too. Cause like, it was just a melee. And, uh, one guy comes running out and takes off down the road the opposite way. And I'm like, Oh cool. He's fucking leaving. He wasn't, he was going to get the vehicle. Okay. So then like 10 seconds later, the V as the vehicle starts to pull up, I see this fuck, the same fuck I, that had the bin in the first place coming out with the same bin full of our weed. He can't see me because I'm on the side of the gate. And my truck's here. So as soon as he steps to the front of the gate, I cracked him and he drops the bin just like, oh, right. I, I fucking hit him and I and he like and he didn't and I grabbed the bin and I just threw it in the back of my truck right he took off running the car is still there the guy fuck i'm like what the f so i run up to the front of the car the it's a work van they were like electricians or plumbers right okay <clears throat> they took their work van and ran the fucking door i start banging on the hood like boom 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 like what and he's like freaking the fuck out and pulls around me right like like uh, like and just drives so as literally as this is happening, right? He I he goes this way, I spin to the left. You dodged death like fucking 20 times in the story. And as the as this is happening, the dude comes out with the gun. Right? With it out. Yeah. Right? Sideways, I'm pretty sure, just to be honest. Yeah. And uh I, I literally like can see it. And uh out of instinct, bro. I grab my cell phone, put it up to my ear, and I go, I'm on Washington and fifth. He's got black pants, black hoodie, he's got a gun. And he like looks at me and was like, oh shit. And literally just takes off running. <laughs> I'm in the middle of Washington Boulevard at this point where the downtown goes LA. down, ready to fight. Like, what's up? Right. Cause like, and people are driving by, Dude, not what stopping. What trips me out is you have 
n- you had no plan and nothing. <laughs> they were not going to take <coughs> Blackley from me. You saved everything that day. They got nothing. You saved everything that day. They got day. nothing. They didn't get shit. Everything they had, but what had happened was we had painted the front of the doors with our schedules, right? And, and so I want the guys to be able to come in, read the front of the door, and not have to open the door and be like week three and look at a schedule. It's all on the front of the door. This is some pro shit. I'm gonna be honest. Right. And I thought we were there, but I didn't realize. Yo, if they break in and take pictures, they know every room's cut down schedule. So then they can kind of if they're which most of these guys are probably work at grows too. Yeah, definitely. They can figure out everything else from i there. knew we were marked we were so marked they kept trying sure. but we had i had security security had stopped them even after like you had gone and done your thing at this yeah. time we were completely at that time not talking to be honest yeah and uh the warehouse was continuing and i was like yo it I'm was gonna- it was beyond just gross stuff but oh yeah you know. no me and you well we when you're in business and you live together and then you grow together and, and you're failing a business yeah yeah it's like it's, yeah i mean it's tough. and it's tough to bootstrap any business. It is. Talk to any entrepreneur. When you bootstrap a business and think like we and we'll live together too, right? Like come on. Live with all your all the all the employees too. But how do you not do in Cali? It's so expensive here. When you tell people like, "No, I live by myself." They look at you crazy. A lot of people I mean, are like, "Wow." True. Oh, it's true. It's different than any other state. I have like, a oh, tiny yeah, townhouse and I pay 4800 a month. It's fucking insane. Yeah. I'm lucky and I pay like mid threes and it's a house, you know? But yeah, it's uh, it's crazy. So that, that kind of was, dude, it's tough out here, man, for growers, man. It's a tough, it's so, a tough life for growers. So man. you rode the lease out. I knew yep. you would do that. Yeah. It made sense. And too. then I had to, but then I had to go month to month because I had to get it broken down. How am I going to get all this shit out of here? Cause right, you need. There was a, a lot of extra go. after that, bro. It did, yeah, yeah. There was like, it was like, oh god. No, I understand. Well, yeah. we were trying to sell it off. Yeah, and that didn't work, and it was like, you know, st- wasn't like, there. wasn't you know, I, I understand. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? But it was a got crazy it broken ending. down. It was no, it was. I mean, we were getting robbed. It was, it was, and, oh, it was tons of shit. The landlord was uh, uh, <laughs> the million things I could sit here and mention that <laughs> yeah. aren't getting mentioned right now. Anybody who's got partners and 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 you know people that and grow are, you know friends and stuff that are in business, they they understand this type of shit. Um, but from that from that spot, mm-hmm. you you made a real decision that you were on a, a destiny to go a hundred percent legitimate, yeah, and take the brand to the rec market, mm-hmm. which we were on the traditional market at the time. Different laws were getting passed, things were changing quick. Shops are starting to say, hey. We can't work with you. Stuff like that. Deadlines. Right? Like yeah. a lot of things were changing. A lot of things were happening. Mm-hmm. You're making the transition. Talk about your journey into this transition and, you know, where it's led you to today. Uh, well, it started with like, we're a successful brand. We should have somebody that's going to reach out to us and they're going to have a deal for us, right? They're going to have some offering of like, hey, let's let's work together and make money together. That didn't, all the deals, let me say that didn't happen. The good deals weren't happening. All the shitty deals started coming, right? All the real sketchy businessmen, all the the businessmen out in the desert, right? All the guys, like the ones that want to basically absorb your brand or take your brand and, and then all your genetics. And then we'll, you know, we'll sign contract, you know, weird shit. So there was a lot of that for years. And then Honestly, I decided uh, not recently to like, yo, I'm going to take a job in the grow industry. I'm going to learn all this stuff. People are talking about metric and this. And also the big conversation a lot of black market people have that I hear is why does no one on in the white market make any money? Like, why is it such a struggle? Why do you hear all horror stories? Like, I mean, literally horror stories from brands. And uh, it's because of the people who are running them. That's why. Just like any business. And I learned And taxes. Yeah. And taxes are insane. LA wants to raise them again. They already did. Instead of opening more lounges and taking it from new businesses who want to license, who want to expand. Spreading it around. Yeah. They want to just- Open it up more. And how about let's get creative? That actually creates more revenue Mm -hmm. than if you just tax what already exists. Why don't we open more up? Or These other states are opening more up crazy doesn't make sense to not just open it up Lounges. if you ask me if you're first and you're not just opening it up right now kind of crazy but anyway so talk about that experience that you you got into and 
and, uh, and, and there was some downtime in between that. Talk about, oh, you years. know, uh, of just, you know, going Welcome back, LA. And, going back and forth from, you know, investors and what led you to be like, all right, I'm going to go ahead and do this with this group. Well, I'll, I'll give you a peep. Like I met this guy in the desert, like, yeah, we're going to build this hotel and we're all this legal stuff. And, um, you know, they paint a really good picture, bro. And, and if your dream is that like your dreams, like, Oh, they're, they're speaking my language. Right. So they're going to give me what I want to do. Like yeah. they're gonna fund it. Right. And they believe in it. They believe in this yeah. dream that I believe in. Right. This is destined me and you then. And it's hard to find those people. So when you do, you think like this could be it. Right. And then you realize this isn't the money guy talking. This is like a representative of the money guy. He's making the deal and he's trying to take like 60% himself, right? Because he's making the, and then, oh shit, he doesn't even have the money secured and everything's on like, it's a false whim. It's, and he doesn't even speak for the culture. He's like, a, he's like, a, a like even hanging out with him part-time, you're like, he's not even one of us. Right. And then what's real crazy is this is what happened to me. They realize this brand is worth something and everything this kid has built the or guy has built these strains, these genetics, this this network. <clears throat> we need to take this. We need to get this, even if he won't sign this contract. So then I had to fight a trademark dispute. I had to fight uh, uh, them trying to open a black leaf in a different state. Um, I had to fight a couple things. Spend a bunch of money, which is crazy because you go from best friend brother dynamic to random people motherfuckers trying to hit you out of left field with i some, didn't sign anything with this some is, random ass shit this is not signing anything which is crazy they still will try to like i didn't know i thought oh you got to sign something to get fucked no you just got to be in the wrong the meeting with the wrong people or the and room with the, the wrong, wrong things right 100 <clears throat> percent. and them see like oh this is what we need this is what we're missing right here so went through a lot of that a bunch of deals every year it's five to ten deals of bullshit just to be honest three four years of that and then uh i took a job to learn like hey, you know what i'm gonna switch it up these this the head buyer buds and roses had now run a ceo position at this company and had reached out and said dude is this normal this grow crew is running this farm right or this this grow is this normal no, bro, that's not normal. Like aphids, you know, P I mean, covered in P like it's not a normal thing. I, it's a stage. He this is what's not happening. You're not controlling your environment. Uh, do you have airflow? What's going, you know, all these questions, right? Uh, you're a if you have PM, it's from controlling your environment. That's what that's how you get it, right? You're not controlling your environment and airflow environment. So there's multiple things in environment. I'm just being honest, but there was, they were not checking these boxes for this farm. So besides that, there were also bugs. So he was just saying like, man, they, I don't even, they're a CEO. We don't even have a key for the grow. We can't even go there. They won't allow us. And I say, but you own the building. That, that, that's the disconnect in the white market right? and then in the legal market. So the people on the books aren't even in the grow. They found a bunch of freezers that were full of bud that weren't <laughs> supposed to be, you know, just crazy shit that was like, yo, they've been doing everything all wrong and covering it up, right? And then trying to blast it into be, uh, wax and then and then try, trying to charge top dollar for the wax with their brand name on, crazy shit. So I basically came in and they had they confronted the grower. They had a big fallout. The grower flipped out and tried to sabotage some shit supposedly on the way out, right? They let him out. So I came in the next day and I was doing him a favor because he opened the door for us. I never forget that for Buds and Roses. So I was like, yeah, and it's a good opportunity. I'll get to learn. I get to learn. Shout out to James, man. Yeah, Buyer of Buds and Roses. And that's who he's talking about now. Real ass dude. Real Shout dude. out to you, homie, for real. Yeah, I just saw him this past weekend. We might be working together soon again. But uh, yeah, and uh, James was like, and James, he's, he knows grow somewhat. So he just knew shit was up. And so, uh, yeah, bro, I came in there, turned that whole fucking grow around. I brought in my, you know, one of my mentors from Colorado. I brought in other people because like, listen, if I tell you something and you don't take my advice and I want you to hear me, what I'll do next is bring in people you admire or you look up to, to tell you the same thing. So I tried to help them out. The white market, the owners have such a disconnect from the culture. 
and what's really happening and what quality is. I had to stop conversations with people being like, but all that shit in the freezer, 1600 pounds, it's fire. It's like, no, it's covered in bugs and has PM and you're about to charge people top shelf price for wax. It's that you cannot call that fire. Please don't say fire. It's product and you should turn it into distillate and let the lab take it. Like I was trying to explain this mass of that and that's, but no, we got to keep it. We're going to hold on to it and we're going to make sure it goes as diamonds. Crazy shit, bro. Watch out for those diamonds. But what I'm able to do is I was able to just watch and I played my role. I I put, I said, listen, this is the way. Which is really what the best part about consulting or having a job is, is getting hands-on experience, helping people through their problems. And you're getting paid to learn on their dime. With a five-person team too, which at that time was my biggest team, right? We had run yep, teams before, absolutely. but a five-grow crew. Absolutely. And so I had been out for a couple of years now, right? So I thought, mm, good opportunity to, to also hone my skills, bro, and be like, a lot of times I'm super particular, you'll know this. And like, I bump heads with, with uh, people I work with, not, not meaning like people, but like, I have a, a lot of passion. So like, it needs to be done the right way. And so a lot of people will fall by the wayside with that. And so I was like, yo, this will be a good opportunity to work with five guys who really love growing. And it was just that, bro. Everyone was stoked. I mean, to this day, they still hit me up like, yo, you got any grow going that I can help with? You know, awesome. I'm like, we're going wreck. We're soon. We'll be there. You know? Yep. Absolutely. But solid opportunity. Learned a lot, bro. Worked out good. Had some good crops. Knocked Learned those down. Oh, yeah. Crushed some crops for them. Brought some buyers for them. I mean, like all the rec shit, learned metric, uh, met some people in the, you know, on that side of the things that were like, oh, this guy sells genetics. He's, you know, yeah, absolutely. Bro. Speed us up to right now, big dog. Talk, inform us about what you got going and some of the talks that you got going that, that you know are really leading somewhere that you maybe want to share. Uh-huh. And tell the people about, you know, Black Leaf 2022, baby. <laughs> um, just working, bro. Uh, Working on a couple plays um, right now, to be honest, what I had to do and like I would talk to like a lot of guys in my position like this is that I had to stop accepting deals coming from the outside in and I had to create my own deal and bring it to somebody else. Like stop like the that. madness, Proposal. bro. Proposal. So here's my black leaf grower deal. If yeah. you want to work with black leaf, this is what it is. Not send me your paperwork. And then some crazy ass deal that's been a bunch of bullshit that's so far off. And then trying to work that towards a deal that's actually good versus just if you're interested here, it is. If not, like if you were going to work with a big corporation, they don't give you, hey, send us what you're thinking. No. See what I'm saying? They, you, this is the offer. Let us know if you want to work with us. Shout out to Cody because I've been telling him to give us a proposal for like three weeks. And he's still our has, videographer. He's still yeah, our videographer back here, one of yeah, our videographers. Yeah. And he still, <laughs> he still hasn't even done that. He's, he's been really hard to do it. But Proposal. Uh, I, yeah. But when you're smaller, you can do that. When you're bigger, it's definitely not like that at all. There's no way. So but, I, I'm talking to, I mean, I'm talking to our big homie, Randy, up in Washington. Maybe right. if that works out, he's he's taking over 2,000 lights. He's looking for a brand. I would love to get involved, make sure he has the right genetics and take some flights and really get my hands dirty in Washington a little bit. But my main focus, to be honest, is here. It's just crazy because that's how tough it is, the market, that I'm getting better opportunities other places than I am here. What do you... So to digress a little bit... But shit I, is and, popping. Yeah. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, so 2022, what are we looking for out in Blackleaf? Let's Blackleaf's going to be hitting the shops. I'm, I'm, but product grown by me, everyone, I'm going to be honest, like you get a lot of deals like, yo, we're going to get some other growers who are already growing the shit. We're going to put your brand on it and it's going to be great. And then once you get going, we're, you know, and it's like, no, it's it, it, if I'm if you're known as a grower, you got to grow the shit, especially as your market entry to be like, yo, here's what I do for a living. So that will be hitting shelves product that I grew with my genetics and most likely stuff that I bred. I, I, and you, know, you got I, that working out a deal right now. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm also working on a deal where we'd be able to provide genetics to California and breed to be able to breed the genetics that I created and or have. And be able to release those in shops. So you'd be able to in, buy in the big seeds shop too. Or the clones of stuff I've worked on, Fruity Pebbles, Dirty Sprite. Absolutely. I mean, tons of stuff that I have locked away. 
Absolutely. Shout out to Dr. Green Thumb and oh, uh, man. the homie Gev over there for gifting us this stunning right here. It, it, speaking of a solid individuals, uh, used to be one of the buyers at Divine Wellness and literally opened doors for Blackleaf. Like 100%. He's shown be- love some from the jump. Oh, you know, guys are great when they're like taking your flower and like taking photographs of it, promoting it. And then we did a couple things where we did, we would show up and bring the, um, zoom in lens camera the microscope and then people could buy an eighth and then come bring it under the microscope with like yeah. transparency yeah this is what our trichomes and and quality buds with no problems look like yeah like you can also buy other buds and put them out there you know not to put anyone on blast but like that's what it's for is just to show this is what a proper trichome looks like under a microscope not this bent down beat up like weathered paper bag you yeah, know? because Straight that's up. what you see a lot. It needs to look like a museum piece, like a diamond. Absolutely. That homegrown. And you're 18 years of growing residential yeah. and commercial now. Mm-hmm. Knowing everything you know, how do you feel about dropping the Grow Your Own show on for on First Smoke of the Day mm-hmm. as Blackleaf? <laughs> Um, how do you feel in, in your capability of being able to teach somebody how to have their own little home grow situation? Um, I, I know I can do it. And at the same time, nothing is like teamwork. So one of the coolest things I'm going to do besides getting to learn from Blackleaf and like what I would do in my setup and what I do. No, by what you know now too. Yeah. 18 years in, I started growing in 2002 full time. I've, I've done nothing but cultivation since 2002 you, like i haven't were, had a valet job and then also you know what i'm saying like yeah. this is all i've done valet was it yeah that was my last job brooks and, Brother. brooks and brothers <laughs> <laughs> we're not gonna digress there <laughs> buddy's gonna start putting me in uh <laughs> wait a minute you were a suit and tie before that buddy <laughs> no nah, talk about man. daytona beach a little bit yeah, no nah, i try- well, that's just, you know, you get in a situation with a girl and no, she's got big plants for you and you're like, I I'm think I could be corporate and then also grow weed Santa. And then you realize like, I was built for this grow life. Like Straight this other up. thing ain't like, sorry. You know, what's crazy. I had a salesman who was above me bring when I, when I left and he took me to lunch and he says, bro, you're going to do fucking huge things and something else, but it ain't this. <laughs> and it wasn't because of, he just knew that. Like I have, I, there's passion, but it ain't here. Right. right? Like right. that's the drift I got was like, yo, whatever you you're focused on, just, I think you need to, you need because, to go ahead and go in all there because sales, like you're like, and fucking Daytona beach, bro. <laughs> <laughs> bro. Come on. Man, look at us digressing all over the place. This is what but, me and him do though. So a lot of history. So black leaf 22, we got genetics Flower coming. Shell, genetics. Flowers hitting the shelves. And grown by the man himself. Yeah, yeah. Our team. We're looking for we're looking for maybe a new strains to come to drop. I got a next breeding project too. I'm gonna do some reversals start of the year. Um, I got some genetics I'm crossing um, that have been with me for a long time. Hell yeah, yeah. The grow your own show is gonna launch on first oh. smoke of the day. You got to be on the family plan for that. Bunch of growers. That'll be getting launched. We'll be featuring a bunch of growers with the man Blackleaf himself, and we'll be showing you in a home grow setup in a tent. Yeah, how you can grow your own. Um, All through Grow Generation. Of- First one will be us, us actually getting the equipment and stuff. So Absolutely, shout out list. to Grow Generation. We're gonna go there and get everything you need to grow your own at home, only in the places you're allowed to do it. Obviously, yeah. But we're going to go to Grow Generation and, you know, we're going to pick up some Power SI. And we're going to do our legal limit of plants and we're going to put them in a tent and we're going to show you guys how Blackleaf grows with a bunch of his guests as well, week to week. And we're going to bring guests in and be able to show you what they do week to week. And we're going to get super heady because I I think some of you guys want to hear some super heady shit, some grow shit. Talk about a little bit of grow tech just to wrap it up here at the end. Well, we could start with like controlling your environment, you know, VPD, how to not get powdery mildew, how to also get high yields, how to have structure in your flower. And then also when you're having problems, why? You know what I'm saying? Like, why am I having this issue and tr- and backtracing it? Okay, it's environment. Okay, if it's environment, what is it? And then let's go into irrigation. Now you have crop steering. 
We're going to do old school tech. And then second run, maybe we'll go that route, right? We have so many different methods to go. And then while we're doing that and we're talking environment, we're talking strains, I'm real interested to see what kind of strains you want to do because you know I got a crazy menu. Yep. So I think we throw something real interesting in there, like maybe an 85-day haze, like a Cuban black haze, something real interesting. Or or we go the opposite route and we do something real, you know, but we got a couple... And we're going to have other growers coming in and talking about that same week and their runs, what medium, what style, exactly what, what they do. Yeah, all that. And we can kind of have a conversation about that. And you guys can kind of get the best of both worlds, what I do, what they do, and week to week, all different guys, some of, some of our best friends in Absolutely. the industry. Absolutely. Blackleaf.la. Yep. 2022 coming out strong. We're wrapping up 2021. I'm pretty proud of the progress you made with this podcast. Appreciate you coming by and, you know, dropping the background. This is actually our third one. This is our third one. This is the first one we're releasing. <laughs> yeah. And that was the clean version, if you didn't believe me. You know, yeah, we don't got to get into all the history. You know, no. we don't, we don't really, I, I feel like I've, I've, we both earned our stripes and that's uh, why we're here. We have our reasons for everything that we've done. And we continue to do, you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, and right uh, we're still rocking steady. And I think that's the differentiator and what maybe other people could maybe compare it to. But we create well together, bro. It's e crazy. Either way it goes, man. Blackleaf.la at Blackleaf underscore on Instagram. Obviously, first smoke of the day on YouTube. Please go subscribe. Go comment. Drop some constructive feedback down on the comments below. Don't don't drop any negative shit we can't build off of. We don't. <laughs> I don't even look at them. So only the constructive shit gets told to me, and 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 that's just how it goes. But drop that down there. Make sure you fuck with us. Episode twenty nine. It's fucking black leaf in the building. The big homie pack gods. Let's go, man. All We're signing off. We appreciate everybody. You already know it's first smoke family, man. Episode twenty nine. Shout Peace. out, grow gem power si. Yo, what's up, First Smoke family? Just want to take a few seconds to shout out some special partners of the show. Make sure you guys go check out Grow Generation, the largest hydroponic retailer in the nation, over 60 retail stores, growgeneration.com. They also carry some awesome products there. Blackleaf, tell them a little bit about our next sponsor, Power SI. Man, the hands down, the best potassium silicate on the market. This is what I use in my garden. This is what the best growers in the country are using. This is what the best growers in the world are using. This is the potassium silicate for growers. For more information on our partners, click in the description below. We're going to include all the links, all the information, everything you guys need to know to get down with any of these companies. Shout out to Grow Generation, Power Rest Side. We appreciate you guys. First Smoke Family forever. Thank you.